everyone. Um, I've been seeing a lot of posts online and like in the community of people not really understanding how to, or at least having difficulty with the mini boss of this um, side dungeon, the Decaying Temple, um, by a nearby Sai and also Kami in between the two. Here, um, it's a unique side dungeon where upon entering it normally with a group of people, um, it says, come alone if you wish to pass through the gate. Um, this is really interesting because it basically means you have to bring only one character, and that means prior to completing your main character, your protagonist, Chapter 4, you're stuck with them, right? So, in order to enter, uh, we'd have to go ahead and say, uh, you know, go to Sai, and dump off the rest of our party in the tavern. And as you can see, because I started with Throne, um, she's locked my party, and I can't not remove her. Um, and that's not just because she's the last one, right? That's just the way the game works. So, uh, for most of the time, you're going to be, uh, stuck with your main character unless you rush their chapter 4 down, or their, their story down, at least. Um, which is usually ill-advised, but I don't think it matters that much. So we're going to put on evasive maneuvers. And we're gonna run on over there. And when we come here with just the one character, the gates open and we're allowed to enter the, de and enter the decaying temple. So I've already beaten this boss, um, but I decided to load up a save file prior to defeating him to sort of like give a rundown and sort of a general thoughts. Um, <laughs> of how I, um, attempted to approach the fight, at least. This is... What? Kind of awful, right? My turn. So, um, I guess we didn't talk about it now, because I'm gonna switch to throwing it over, but I believe the two best classes for this fight are Thief and Apothecary. So I'm gonna be using Thurne, whose base job is Thief, and I'm gonna keep giving her Apothecary. For a few reasons. So Apothecary is very good because of um, Replenish Health. The regen in this game is much stronger than the regen in Octopath 2 and Octopath or in Octopath 1. Um, Octopath 1's regen was about 10% of your max HP, which isn't very strong, right? Like for 1,000 HP, it's giving me 400 HP every every turn, which isn't very good. Um, in this game, it's 20%, which is, you know, quite a bit better. 800 HP a turn is pretty solid. Um, a few other things that can be helpful are um, Poison Axe and Weak to Poison, um, which we'll, we'll get into specifically why they can be useful uh, later on. But, so, um, a few equipment that are kind of important to go over. Um, with Throne, their main damage that we're going to be dealing is with Surprise Attack, because it's a very strong attack, especially in a solo situation like this, where it's always at max damage. Um, so the sword we're using is the Hypno Sword, which I believe is, um, I got it a while ago, but I believe I got it around the, uh, Timberane area. This, like, sort of area here. This, like, third tier region of the Leaflands. Um, 310 damage is very good, or physical attack. This Marietta dagger is available after completing, um, Thurne Chapter 3. And this is um, a pretty endgame axe. I don't really need it. Um, since we're not going to be doing that much damage. And it's also available at a higher level area by the third town in St um, Stormhill. The third town in the Winterlands. So, um, yeah, but it doesn't really matter. You don't really need it. In fact, let's just put on a different axe then. This is, I don't know, it's not very strong. We're not going to be caring about it too much. Um, oh, I would actually like that, wouldn't I? Oh, well. I had, I had speed equipment on, but I, I realized that Abers isn't actually that good, so we're going to change it up. So we're actually going to... Just, the idea here is we want bulk, and the best way to give bulk is... Um, through max HP. So I don't have any max HP things to give here. So we're just gonna go with the highest defense gear we can do. 
Uh, and then Knight's Armor, right? So, as you can see, with 4,500 max HP, that's a lot of bulk. And then we're going to also give two Empowering Bracelets. Um, I could have given the Empowering Necklace. Um, but I figured that is uh, more difficult to find. And these two the Empowering Bracelets are very easy to get and are... Um, and do pretty much the job. Next is the passives, right? Uh, so we have an EM on right now, but we're going to have Inspiring Break, because the big thing with this fight is SP and HP, like, right? Like your resources, essentially. Um, and since using an item can be pretty taxing, you kind of don't want to have to regen your SP manually, and so Inspiring Break helps a lot with that. Um, Show goes on is specifically for the HP regen. Um, it's very helpful, and also, as I learned, affects b passive boosts like Thurnay's talent and um, the bolstering break, which we're going to be using over Latent Power Plus here. Um, which again gives you gives us gives us a way to boost our physical attack, um, which will help us speed the fight up a little bit. And Hale and Hardy gives us more bulk. It might be, it might feel a little bit redundant with 4,000 max HP already, but I find it's definitely very helpful. And so an important thing is, um, we're gonna get an encounter here probably. Maybe not. Okay, the important things to note, we want it to be nighttime because we're using Thurnay. Thurnay, I believe, is likely the best character for this because um, <clears throat> her talent isn't particularly useful, but her latent power is incredibly good. Which is why I had latent power plus on, I was using it earlier, but bolstering break was um, very helpful. So that's what we're gonna be using. And yeah, so I'm gonna, just gonna go ahead and go through the fight. Um, And not quite enough, unfortunately. Okay, so we're going to actually make a few changes to the support skills here. Instead of bolstering break, um, we're actually going to be using hang tough, which is the third merchant pass. Um, this will just make the fight a lot more consistent and less sort of praying at the end. So, what to do? first thing to note here is Thorny's latent power is incredibly yes. strong in this fight, and it charges pretty quickly. So this is the kind of thing where you just kind of want to use it off cooldown. Uh, and the first thing we're going to be giving here is Scaling HP Thief time. to kind of lower his shield as much as possible. He's then going to the Unsheathing Stance, which is where he builds up um, into a stronger attack each turn. So the first time he's going to do a single slice, then he's going to double slice. And we're just gonna break him here. Cleaning time. What to do? But I will hold back. And then we're gonna do a lot of damage to surprise him. And that's gonna be the main cycle of the fight. And we're gonna break him with the P thief, and then we're My going turn. to use surprise attack to do a ton of damage. As swift as a snake. Um. And so again here, like we just get our latent power back, so we're gonna run it. We're gonna use it. Two turns is very good. Um, so we're gonna use Replenish Health. It'll be fine. It's a very good skill. It's the main reason we're using Apothecary. Outside of one other use, right? But it's a lot of region, right? 910 each turn is very good. Along with the um, chip healing we're gaining from HP. Ready? What to do? And so here we're going to, since we can break this turn, which is Colonol. But the actual night thing we want to do is use Armor Corrosive You're open. to deal more damage the next break. My turn. Um, and we can actually use our Lightning Power here. There's not much we really need to do. We can use Lightning Power what? to give ourselves more regen. It'll be fine. Ready? You're too fine. And so that'll let us heal throughout this break. To do. Because th that is a big thing with Octopath, uh, especially these solo fights, is trying to manage like dealing damage while also healing. 
and if you go into a break while you're at kind of middling health, you're gonna enter the next, like, cycle of the fight at low health, and so it's good to give yourselves, um, a, uh, like an avenue to, like, heal. And give yourself good sustain during the break cycles. So we're gonna stack for very solid damage. Tiger and Wolf, this is a very interesting phase, so a big thing to note here is you, if you use any BP or your latent power, you will start dodging all of your attacks. Um, the game doesn't really tell you this at all, it's kind of annoying, but he does go into his unchanging stance, so you do have to break him pretty quickly, and so the main thing you want to do here is use a lot of multi-hit moves. HP Thief, ag Aggressive Slash, um, other miscellaneous Hikari learn skills. Time. Um, so here, we unfortunately are out of SP, so we're just gonna have to, uh, bonk. We can't boost, we can't really break that much, or we can't use our latent power that much, so what we're gonna do here is we're going to use as our latent power. Um, so, I, what you might be tempted to do here is use Armor Corrosive into Surprise Attack, but the way Surprise Attack works is it bases you off of actions that have already happened. And if you use your latent power to gain two actions, do something with the first action, and then use Surprise Attack, you actually lose a lot of damage. So, we're going to just max boost Surprise Attack here. Go deal 5,000 damage. Decent. Um, and then we're going to restore our SP with plus. Alright, and um, we're into this part where he's just like starting to deal some decent damage every turn. So we're gonna go ahead and just cast our regen. What to do? And just have very solid health regen the whole fight. Cleaning time. And we're gonna hit our lightning power. It's very good. What to do? So we can see we're gonna be able to break him next turn if we just use HP Thief this turn and the next. So we're going to go ahead and use our lightning power to um Actually we're not gonna use our lightning power. We're gonna be the smarter play, which is to use HP Thief this turn. And then next turn, go ahead and use our light in power to boost armor corrosive so it lasts even longer. You're open. Ready. And then we go ahead and HP thief. To break. To do? And now we've broken. Over. And we can go ahead and use surprise attack. Heavy footed, For lots of damage. So here's his flawless Ready? stance. Um, it looks very intimidating, right? No sh no weaknesses, there's nothing you can do about it. Um, but, and he is in his um, unsheathing stance, meaning he's going to build up an attack every turn until eventually the point where he's going to one-shot you. And it may seem like a DPS race, but what it actually is, is an Apothecary check. Because Apothecary has an interesting move called Weak to Poison. Can you take it? And um, you can give him a weakness in his flawless stance, and then use Poison Axe. And so here, uh, he will simply uh, break himself. What to do? We don't have a lot of BP to do a lot of damage, but what we can do is just click Surprise Attack for just 2,000 chip damage. It's pretty decent. And he's gonna go back into his regular stance of uh, normal Ready? weaknesses. Doing some damage every turn. It'll be fine. And we're gonna start replenishing our health up. And we're gonna go ahead and use an inspiring plum. And he's gonna start doing some just regular attacks. And he's gonna use ready weapon, that just gives him three stacks of sidestep as you can see. So we're gonna go ahead and use our latent power. We're just gonna go ahead and burn a bunch of those sidestep charges. I feel okay using that BP there because we're gonna regenerate on our way to break them anyways. So it's not really a big deal. And so here we're gonna be able to... Um, 
What I would like to do actually is um, It'll be fine. cast regen. The Suffering Sword is unfortunate because it's going to lower our um, physical attack. And we're not exactly in a good position to try to stall the turns out. So what we can do actually is um, as swift as a snake. use our latent power to lower his physical attack. Cleaning time. And then use a grape pen. I'll take this. To heal up. And then heal more with our regen. And so he's really not gonna do a lot of My damage. Turn. And what we can do now is actually boost armor corrosive. <clears throat> You're open. To give himself to give him lots of weaknesses. That's unfortunate, but it's okay. Because what we can just do here is use HP Thief to burn two of the three stacks what? of Sight Step, and then use HP Thief to burn the last one and break the last heal point. Ready? And so now we can just go ahead and max boost and surprise attack. Heavy footed, Another 8,000 damage. And so now he's going to go into the unbreakable stance. So this is a pretty, um, pretty spooky one, right? So he is, he does seem weak. He is weak to every weapon, every element in the game. But he has 15 shields, and he's in his unsheathing stance, meaning we have to break him in four turns. Uh, otherwise, he uses the attack to instantly kill us, right? Um, and you might be doing the math and realizing that we can't hit 15 shields in four turns, and you are correct. Um, so the main idea here is we're going to be attempting to just burn through his... HP as fast as possible what to do? Stop, I will hope without that. breaking him, which is kind of the reason we dropped boosting, um, bolstering break, because it doesn't help in this phase, and this phase is kind of the most important part of the fight. And so, I don't usually like to use items, um, I think they're very strong, however, in this scenario, um, what? I am willing to use a singular energizing pomegranate L. I'll take this. To give myself what to do. The BP necessary uh. to click um, armor cursive here. You're open. <laughs> So actually, Ready. the point of that was so that it could defend this turn, but since we don't necessarily need to defend, um, I'm going to also heal up with a Grape and Actually, I'm going to heal up with Replenish Health because it will heal more. Because it will eat this is a little 1800. Actually, the plum will, the Grape will also do like 1800. This is this is need me. Actually, yeah, we should do that. I'll take this. My turn. Wait, oh. And so now the, the the thing, the reason why I didn't use surprise attack last turn was because we went second. This turn we go first. Um. Heavy footed. And we do enough damage to kill a surprise attack. Okay, so cool. So we didn't need to, we didn't need to rely on him tough at all. Um. Yeah, and that's the fight. We are on level, not exactly over leveled. We didn't use any particularly overpowered strategies, right? Like, um, we didn't use any, let's see, what are they called? Um, bottled nightmares are the, uh, let's see. Yeah, so bottled nightmare is incredibly powerful. Um, I actually don't know if it works on this fight. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest because, um, I didn't bother using it. We didn't use any soul stones. We didn't use hired help. If you wanted to just spend 60k leaves to win the fight, you can just use hired help veterans. Um, it's an option, but I like to sort of give this as a, like a resource, as sort of like my thought process of how I went about it. I think Thorne is by far probably the best character for this. Um, you could I, like I'm not particularly ver well versed in Hikari's learn skills, and I'm sure there's some things he could do. I know his latent power gives him an extra action um, after using a certain attack, and I get that's very good. 
but I find that Thief is probably one of the best skill or one of the best um, jobs for that fight. As well as Apothecary for the weak to poison being a very, very useful skill. There's other ways to get around it too, like Ochat's latent power um, will break the shields regardless of her um, physical defense buff. Our physical defense and physical and elemental defense debuff skill and latent power reduces shield points without worrying about weaknesses. Um, hired help beastlings reduces shield points without worrying about weaknesses. I'm sure there's a an Hakari learn skill that will lower shield points without worrying about weaknesses. <clears throat> uh, Tomenos Tomenos latent power will do that. There's a lot of there's a lot of resources you have to deal with flawless sand. So it's not just. Um, Weak to poison, poison axe, but I do find the regen of Apothecary to also be incredibly good, and I could get the most broken divine ever recreated. Um, that's not true. Yeah, the most broken divine is Avers. Um, but anyways, yeah, if you guys like this kind of content, uh, let me know, and that means uh, I might just make more of these kind of guides and stuff for some of the harder fights in the game. Um, the goal of this is not to give you like a exact one for one strategy that you can replicate. Um, even though I think you kind of can in this case, um, especially because it's like a solo, but I, the idea is to give you like a resource and give you like my an inside um, perspective of my thought process for fights like this and to sort of help you like to devise your own strategy, right? Um, but yeah, I actually um, will be streaming this game live on my Twitch um, often. We're pretty far into it as you can kind of tell. We're on some chapter threes. Um, Sort of been exploring, haven't been exploring, like, everything so far, but we've been going pretty far. Um, so yeah, if, um, you want to check that out, the link will be in the description. Um, I also have a VODs channel, if you guys want to watch the VODs, the, like, 5, 6, 12 hour long VODs, uh, I'll also be linking my VODs channel in the description, so check that out, I guess, if that's something, that kind of content is something you want to see. Um, you know, just have a little bit of background music on or something, I don't know. The background music is me playing Octopath Traveler 2 for 12 hours straight. <clears throat> Anyways, yeah, thank you so much for watching. Um, and I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.